Where to find leaks in your air conditioner. So guys, today I'm going to talk about where to look for AC leaks and where we find the most AC leaks on the different models. And so this should save you from having your AC hoses replaced when not necessary or an evaporator replaced when it's not necessary or an entire AC system replaced when it is not necessary. So a couple of basic rules of thumb here. First of all, with AC systems, it's very rare that every single component in the AC system leaks. How rare? Well, I've never seen it before, but I guess it could happen if the car was submerged in something like salt water. Anyway, the number one location that we see leaks are from AC compressors, and this goes for any compressor. This is because the AC compressor has the small seals, it's constantly in motion, it has a front seal, and front seals almost always leak. And um, this could be with any compressor. Now you can reseal an old York compressor and you can reseal a Delco A6 compressor. It is much harder to reseal um, an R4 compressor. And you can also reseal a Nippon Dinzo compressor, but you know, sometimes the results are, are kind of mixed. I personally don't reseal them because I can get genuine ones easily, but I don't throw away the ones I remove in case I have to buy seal kits and reseal them. Um, Nippon Dinzo compressors are the most obvious leakers. You'll see green refrigerant oil seeping out of the compressor body. R4 compressors are not as easy to spot, but you will often see refrigerant leaking out of the circular seal around the back of the compressor. However, if you have a system with an R4 in it and you're not sure where the leak is coming from and it's really hard to find, it's probably the R4 compressor. No big deal though because they're cheap and they are easy to change and that's why I love them. Delco A6 compressors also leak. They leak from the rear O-ring and occasionally the front O-ring. You can pull the compressor out and you can often change the O-rings. The front shaft seals and the A6 leak a little bit. It's sort of a fact of life, but if the rear housing O-ring starts to leak, well, you should do something about that. Now, let's look at, um, let's look at some other places I get leaks. So on the 124 and on some later 126 cars, evaporator leakage does occur. How do you find evaporator leakage? I hate to say this, but you have to put green dye in the system and let it run for a few days and then check your evaporator drain tubes. Now we know on the 126 is that the left side evap drain tube likes to disintegrate. And by the way, if you have a 126 and you're getting water all over the floor with your air on or a 123 and you're having the same problem, check your evaporator drain tubes. The 126 only has one, it's made of foam. The 123 has, I'm sorry, the 126 is a left one that's made of foam and a right one that's made of rubber. Only the left one usually goes bad. On the 123, the only evap drain tube is made of foam, and yes, it goes bad. Anyway, look in your evap drain tubes for green oil, but on the way there, stop and inspect the expansion valve, because if you have a block type expansion valve, like the 123 and later cars used, you're gonna find that the end piece has an o-ring that can leak. Where are some other notorious leakage spots? Well, on the 123, not only can the sight glass and the dryer leak, and actually any sight glass and a dryer can leak, 123, 126, 107, you name it, but the inlet pipe on the condenser can leak and you should be willing and able to inspect that. On the 126, the same thing can happen, but condenser failures are relatively rare on early 107s. Now some 107s, the 1976 to 79, I think 450 SL had a hose that was part of the AC hose network that was crimped onto the end of the condenser. It's wise to pull the condenser if you have this hose and replace it with some kind of metal fitting if possible. Any AC shop can do this for you, but you're gonna have to get somebody to braise the fitting onto the condenser. Now, Another place where you can get leakage is through the pigtail wires on the AC pressure switch on a 126, later 107 or 124 series car. You will see green oil seeping out of the wiring pigtail and occasionally the, high, the, the pressure switch can blow its diaphragm and start to leak as well. You should spray the terminals on the pressure switch on the dryer to look for these problems. 
Can hoses leak? Well, hoses do leak. They should be evaluated with a leak detector. But more often than a hose leaking, a Schrader valve can leak, particularly one that has been converted for R134. I would say to exercise good judgment with hoses because before you take your nice Mercedes hoses off and start cutting them, check for bubbling in the hose or an area where the hose is rubbed through. These are the only conditions where you should really replace a hose. Even if your hoses are old, they can still be good. This can be attested to by the numerous 108 and 113 cars we have in the shop that have originally C hoses that just don't leak. Another area that you may want to check for leakage, of course, is going to be old O-rings. Sometimes a mystery leak where you can't find the leak at all can present itself. Sometimes the fuel cooler O-rings or the O-rings where the uh, lines go into the dryer can leak and this can be a major source of leakage as well. So long story short here, you should inspect all the connections and fittings before you start replacing AC hoses, evaporators, and condensers. I want you guys to have working AC, not AC that's really expensive and kind of sort of works. It's packed with dye. And remember that you should do things like make sure your auxiliary fan works with the temperature switch under the hood. You don't need to hardwire, but just make sure the 52 Celsius switch comes on. You know, make sure that you don't have your compressor relay bypassed because of something stupid. You know, just try to try to do your best to make sure that you understand how your AC system works so you don't get taken to the cleaners. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Please tap the bell for notifications. Thank you to all, to all of our Patreon supporters. And if you get any useful advice out of this channel, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so we can become the number one Mercedes channel on YouTube. Thank you, guys.